Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week, and all month we've been talking about how to use the Bible. Very important series of teaching we've had. But before we go into today's broadcast, I want us to call forth our daily bread as the Lord have commanded us to do on this broadcast. Are you ready? Join me right now as we declare, we declare this word. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, when we declare these words, expect a miracle. Expect a miracle. See, because God, who is the doer of this work, have given you instruction. Now, that, that's what we've been talking about all, all month, how to use the Bible. Now, you remember when we started at the beginning, I had explained something to you. And what is that? I explained to you that the Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who have received the Word of God or rather who received the word of God, what they did with it, and how they ended with it. That's the best description of what the Bible is. Now, I kept emphasizing this because you need to take your mindset off from that thought, you know, that the Bible is the word of God. See? Now, in it, you have the word of God. That's why I say it's a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God. So it's a book of stories. And the good thing about the Bible is every story you read about in it is true. Everything you read about, every, every word given by God actually came from God. Every experience people had actually was an experience they had. So it's a book of truth, but then it's a compilation. But now that, this is because there are times, um, if, if you don't understand this truth, it will affect your, your, even your prayer life. It will affect your warfare. Now, everyone knows that if you're born again, it's a life of warfare. Now, when I mean warfare, understand. You know, some way you just use the word warfare. Everybody wants to think about fight, you know. Yes, there is a fight going on because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But there is a wrestling going on. See, understand that there is a wrestling going on. Your life is a life of constant wrestling. Now, that wrestling doesn't mean exercising physical strength. That wrestling doesn't mean not sleeping in the night because some, some people just have this idea that this life is a life of battle. So I can't even sleep every night. I must be praying all night. Now, when you grow to understand God, you will take your wrestling or you will take your battle to a different level. Now, what do I mean a different level? You will learn how to win or fight that battle from the place of victory. There are believers who are constantly living in fear. Now, that's wrong. That's wrong. You look at their lives for the past five years, their story is always the same. Oh, the devil came to attack me. I know what God wanted to do for my life, but the devil just came to attack me. Or some, some people say, anytime God wants to do something in my life, an evil spirit or something just attacks me. Now, when people talk like that, it looks like they are saying God is weak or God doesn't care. But that's not the truth. The truth is they haven't come to the place of understanding where they, they, they begin to war from the place of victory. Now you ask them, has God given you the victory? Of course, God has given me the But the same, with the same mouth, they'll say, but you know, we have to take the victory. How do you take the victory that has already been given to you? Now, when they say take the victory, not just receive the victory from the Lord. They, they like, we have to still fight to take the victory. Something that has been given to you, your name is written on it. Why do you have to fight to get it? Now I understand that you can fight to retain it as your own, see? But then that fight is a different kind of fight. That fight is a different kind of warfare. It's not the one you use strength. 
is the one you actually just use your authority, knowing that this thing belongs to you and you are willing to keep it. See? Now, understanding these things will help you. Because if your understanding is wrong, it means your words will be wrong, your reasoning will be wrong, your decisions will be wrong. And if your decision is wrong, the outcome of your life will be wrong. It's as simple as that. Now, let me read a scripture to you. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Now, this is a popular scripture. It says, Hebrews 4 and verse 12. It says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. Now he says the word of God is quick and living. The old King James says it's quick and active. Now look at that statement there. He says the word of God. The word of God. Now, there is, there is uh, you know, many, many things that we have come to um, accept in Christendom are actually things that were handed down to us. And the more we grow spiritually and in the knowledge of God, the more we begin to see that something might not be completely um, okay with these things that we have been holding on to. So as smart people, what do we do? We go, but we'll take it to the Lord and, and let the Lord talk to us about it. And let him show us, hey, that's not what I really meant when I was instructing so so and so person. See? Now that's why it's important to know. For example, the, the writer of the book of Hebrews made this statement. And now, because it says the word of God, there is a teaching that you must have heard about or you must have come in contact with where it says that the word of God, it, it can be Logos and the word of God can be Rema. Now these are Hebrew words, uh, sorry, these are Greek words used for the word of God. So they say there's Hebrew, uh, there's, there's Rema and then there's Logos. For example, here when it says the word of God is living and active. Now here, the, the Greek word used here is Logos. Right? It's Logos. So now, and then they say, you've heard people say Logos is the written word of God. And Rema is the spoken word of God. Now, even in language translation, and I tell people, it's not enough to say, I have a Greek Bible. I have a Hebrew Bible. So I study my Bible in Greek and Hebrew. So I will understand every word. Even that can lead you astray. The reason is this. Even in your own language, your whatever language you speak, I mean your own um, local dialect that you speak, you know that when things are written in your local dialect and they want to translate it, now except the person doing the translation understands the culture and everything that was going on there sometimes he may give a literal translation and that may mean something completely different you see that now so that's why i say it's not enough to study in hebrew or in greek but there is one thing that if you study or one method of study that you can do and you will never be wrong and what is that that is studying with the Holy Spirit. If you ask the Holy Spirit to teach you and you begin to receive teachings from Him, you know, people, people don't know that the Holy Spirit teaches. I've, I've talked about this before. He does teach. Praise God. And you should be His student. You should be His student. For example, here now, when He says the Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of God. Now, what is the word of God? The word of God is God's direct communication to you. 
So what does it mean Logos and Rema? Very simple. Logos simply is not the written word of God. That's not what the meaning of Logos is. Logos is actually the word of God that communicates his personality, his character, and his ability. Understand? Logos, that's, that's the meaning of Logos I'm giving you now. Logos is actually the, the word of God, or let me put it this way, the message from God that communicates his character, his ability, and his personality. That's what the meaning of Logos is. So when God speaks to you, and the message you are getting from him reveals his character, reveals his personality, reveals his ability, now that's the word of God that's coming to you. But then, that word coming to you is telling you how great God is. That's what Logos is. It's not the, so, so people think the word of God is, the Logos of God is the Bible. No, the Logos of God is not the Bible. In the Bible, you have the Logos of God. In, in fact, the, the studying of the Bible actually will give you that. That's where the understanding, or that's where they, 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 they mixed it up and think that the Bible is the Logos of God. So that's where the interpretation came, that the Logos is the written word of God. So because this whole book we call the Bible talks about the Logos of God. See that now? But if, you see, now it look like, uh, is, is it not the same thing? No, it's not the same thing. Because the fact that you are reading it doesn't mean the word of God has come to you. Get it right. That's where I'm driving at. You may read Genesis to Revelation and still the word of God will not come to you. We don't read the word of God. The word of God comes to you. And guess what? The word of God comes from his mouth to you. It is only then you can say that the word of God has come to you. The fact that you read it, you can't just carry your Bible, flip where do I, okay, let me read the Psalms. You open the Psalms and then you begin to read it. And I say, oh, the word of God have come. Oh, God have spoken to me this morning. Not necessarily. Now, I know that sometimes the word of God can come to you and direct you to the Bible. Yes. The word of God can come to you and it will come to you in quotes from the Bible. Yes. But you see, how you know that it's the word of God, it's not simply because it contains quote from the Bible, but it's because you heard the sound of that word in your spirit. Now, of course, this can come, you know, I, I think I talked to you about some ways some people say, the Lord spoke to me in an aud with an audible voice. I said, no, you didn't hear an audible voice. It's you that interpreted that to be an audible voice. Meaning, it's not like God spoke from heaven and the whole earth shook. And no, 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 no. You heard that word in your spirit. But because of the intensity of what you heard, you just, the best way you can describe it, because yes, because sometimes it sounds like an audible voice. But then you know that the next person with you in the room, somebody may even be holding your hand and standing. And the word of God will come to you so loud like that. But the person will hear nothing. That's to tell you that it was not audible. It was in your spirit. Praise God. Yeah. Now, even though sometimes you can even turn to see who's talking to you. But if someone is there also, the person will not know what happened. Just what, oh, what is it? Say, oh, nothing. Did you hear anything? No, I didn't hear. Oh, oh, oh okay. Now, when you grow to understand, you now know that, oh, this is how God talks. This is how God operates. Praise God. So, get this right. That the Logos of God is the Word of God that communicates to you His character, His personality, and His ability. 
Praise God. My time is up today, but we're going to continue tomorrow. I'm taking my time to teach, so we'll land and end um, in, in a way you would understand and begin to um, receive clear, with clarity the word of God coming to you. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.